Okay, here's what your Johnson 18 is very well going to look like when you receive it. What we intend to do now is kind of give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how all this works. Kind of provide you with all the nuts and bolts of everything you're going to need to be doing. And hopefully this will be kind of a comprehensive uh, how-to manual for you. My partner here, Tim Regan, is going to help us out and we'll go through and see if we can explain this for you. When you receive your Johnson 18, the first thing you want to do is cut all the tie-down straps loose from the mast and the hull. Probably wipe down all the excess grit off the boat and then pull your mast off the boat. What we've done here is pull it off and laid it out towards the back of the boat just so you can kind of line everything up. Okay, your mast will undoubtedly come without the spreaders on. What you're going to have to do first is find out the spreader and figure out which is the top and which is the bottom. It's most easily done by showing one side of your side stay is going to have a turnbuckle on it. The other side will have a small T-shaped fitting. That is your top. That is your bottom. You put the spreader in, as you can see, there are going to be two holes that are going to fit right in there. The third middle hole is not to be used, it's just used there for, to make the rig lighter. You put the pins in through the two holes going down. So the pin is going to start from the top side and go down. Now we cut these pin holes really narrow, so you may have to use some pliers or maybe a hammer to pound those through. We don't want those to jerk around and loosen themselves up. You then will just lock those pins in place with the use of a small cotter ring, which will go into each of the holes. Once you have that complete, there will be a T-ball fitting. Hold the T up once for me, Tim. The top of your side stay has a small T-shaped unit. You can see that it's got a small T-shaped which will only fit through the socket hole when it's aiming in a certain direction. So you got to line that up and kind of pop it through and then twist the, the T down. There then will be a small rubber plug. Where are we got it? There is a small black rubber plug which you wedge into the top portion of that T socket just to keep that T fitting from coming loose during capsize or while you're at the pier and there's no tension on your rig. You simply got to force that little guy in there and it can be tricky so have patience. Sometimes a squeezing and then a twisting method will get that in most easily. The same process goes for your lower side stay which is attached right below your spreaders on your mast. You just pop those in place like so. Once you and a friend have the mast on the boat, then it's time to attach your side stays and your upper side stays and your lower stays. Usually you're able to balance the boat, the mast of the boat. So this is a good time to get everything kind of sorted out, find which rope goes where, and just kind of line everything up once before you actually do the attachment phase. As is obvious, the upper side stay is the one on the furthest outside which goes through the spreader and goes to the very top of the mask. Your lower stay is the one which is much shorter, starts below the spreader and stays on the inside. Your stays go pretty much the same way as I explained onto your chain plate. Your upper stay which is on the outside goes on the outside portion of this chain plate. I'm standing at the front of the boat right now looking backwards. Simply just slide that over the knuckle over the hole, put your pin through, and put your ring ding on. A good piece of advice to consider when doing this is those ring dings under sail can often snag. So you may want to put in a small piece of tape over those once you've completed your rigging. Now your side stay is connected. One thing to consider also when putting your mast up is you want to put the mast up with the rig under pretty little tension. So it's a good idea 
to loosen your lock nut setting and spin the barrel of the stay turnbuckle so you get to loosen uh, you get it to a fairly loose setting make sure you're not going to let the whole thing come out of the body but just loosen your turnbuckles up a little before raising the mass is always a good idea once you start on uh, once you have both stays on you want to start untangling all your ropes the one rope you are going to need while raising the mast is your spinnaker halyard. The spinnaker halyard will very likely be a black rope which exits on the starboard side, the right side of your mast through an exit hole. This is now going to be fed down through a through deck on your boat. Here's your chain plate and the through deck we are using is the large through deck to the right side of the chain plate so you can see how that's just going right down in there Tim's gonna pull mo quite a bit of the slack out and he's gonna feed it down through a pulley inside I'll get inside there and show you in two seconds we're now looking underneath the deck, underneath your mini deck, and here's the spinnaker halyard we just fed down through, and you're going to pull it through the furthest block to the right of your clump there. It's going to be a small black pulley with a spring on it. So you simply leave the, the rope, spinnaker halyard, through there, and pull it back. Okay, that black rope is now going to go back through the cockpit underneath all the ropes so it lays as close to the floor as possible and it's going through a cleat with a fair lead and then a pulley back by the center traveler. I'll leave this on for a second so you can see where that's going. But there's a cleat and then there's a pulley and then you're led right back to the skipper there. So you've run the, the spinnaker halyard through the deck to a pulley underneath the deck along the bottom now you'll see this boat doesn't have its backbone completely in place just for illustration purposes and then right back to the skipper's compartment back by the traveler and Tim's now putting a small knot through there and we're back I had to change a battery real quick right there this is a block we call the Vang block it's going to be located on the bottom of your mast you'll recognize it well. There's the mask coming right up to the front. What right now I'm going to tell you to do is put a piece of tape in there and tape this block down and you'll see why in a little bit. But it's a real good idea just to tape that block flush with the bottom of, with the side of the mast. Like you see there. Don't let it hang down or stick down in any way. And that's merely a safety measure. If you want, you can remove the block completely. We just like to throw a piece of tape on there. Okay, back to the rigging. Right. The Johnson 18 does not have a jib halyard. As you can see, there's just, whoa, where are we there? All, at the top of the mast, all there's going to be is a small hole, very much like what we use to put your side stays and your lower side stays on. Now there's a T-ball fitting, you're going to notice will probably be in the spinnaker bag or attached already to the top of your jib, but we're going to show you the pieces individually. It fits in place and it's just a small toggle shaped, what we call the jib toggle. And it fits in very simply like so, turn to the side, stick it in and then pull it down the bottom. There's also a small black fitting which will lock that in place, we'll get to later. Now the next step before you raise your mast is you're going to have to get your jib out. Now your jib may be rolled in a long tube, a long thin tube, or it may still be rolled in the bag. What you want to do next is find the very top of your jib, which is going to have a small wire shaped loop at the very top. Attaching to that wire shaped loop on the jib is going to be your jib furling swivel and see what this looks like. It's a small black piece that says Harkin on it. It does not matter top or bottom which end you stick through, but you're going to put it on, put the pins through, and attach it thusly. 
Well, we'll take a brief intermission here to show a guy out on a, appears to be a small, well, he's just got a kite with a, on a pair of ice skates. Which is, this show goes to show you what us wild uh, Norwegians up here in Minnesota do for fun. This guy was last seen skidding along the lake on his rear end. I believe he has uh, padded shorts to do this. Maybe some steel plating in those suckers. Maybe in his head. Maybe in his head. Well, we lost sighting. That's what we call up here is a UFI, an unidentified flying idiot. Those brown things on the shacks on the lake are called ice shacks. That's where uh, the local homeless live. Oh, that's only a bad joke. That's where all the ice fishermen are now uh, drinking. freezing to death and drinking. As you can see, their jeeps are out there just in case their extremities do fall off and they need to go to the hospital. Okay, back to the boat. Okay, here we go, back to the boat. Once that swivel is attached to your jib, now you're gonna attach that small metal toggle piece onto the jib also. So that fits right into the other hole on your furling swivel, and the pins go right on there like so. Okay, now what you want to do is put the whole unit right into your mast. So the jib, swirling, swirling swivel, and the jib is all now attached in one piece. You'll notice our jib is just all unrolled and laying on the ground. That's fine. All right. What we're going to do now is untangle our spinnaker halyard. Oh, something just blew away. I'm going to have to grab. Tim is uncleating his spinnaker halyard so it's at the all far end. Now what he's going to want to do is attach it to this bow eye right here. So you're going to take the clip that normally hooks onto your spinnaker and we're going to attach it right down here. All right. Go ahead. There you go. You're just going to clip that right on there. This spinnaker halyard now is going to act as your forestay while we hoist the mast. It's just going to lay slack here for now. All right, now is when you want to pick up the mast. So this is when you have to associate a friend in here. That's Bob Parks, one of our chief technicians here at Johnson Boatworks. You have to have a friend hold the back. Now you're going to have somebody else be at the front, and you're going to put the butt of the mass right down onto that plate. You can see they match up perfectly and Tim's going to put the pin right on through there. Now sometimes it's not going to line up perfectly so you're going to have to kind of coordinate with the guy holding the mast up and the one putting the pin through to kind of rock the mast or walk side to side. You're just going to put it through the back hole there and you're going to put your little pin on. Okay, a really good idea next to consider when you're putting the mast up is to make sure your side stays all lay to the inside. So here's these. I'm going to kind of push them over. So they all are going to be able to stand straight up or even lean them in a little. If they're leaning out when you go to put them up, they could get snagged outwards. So make sure they're always on the inside where they're able to pop right up for you. All right, moving back, we're going to see now that Tim has the mast in his hand. He's standing just at the spreader. You don't need anybody at the front of the mast and nobody at the back. Tim is the only one holding this mast right now. Now what he's going to do now is as he lifts the mast with one hand, he's going to start pulling on that spinnaker halyard, which is on the floor right at the cleat in the block. Now as he kind of pushes and walks the mast forward, he can pull on that forestay, which is really the spinnaker halyard. And as you can see, the spinnaker halyard cleats itself there. Just pull through the pulley. And there we have it, mast in place. Let me give you a better focus. You can also see that his jib is just kind of flogging around. That's going to happen, but that's OK. If it's windier, you might want to have a buddy grab it. But well, this is really the easiest way. Sometimes when you're getting good at this, your jib is going to be rolled in a straight tube, all furled up, and you can do it real easily that way. Now let's get to the front of the boat where Tim is now going to put his jib and connect it to the furler.
Now, as you can see, we taped that block up because if you rock the mast back while it's sticking down, it's going to get wedged right in here and crack your deck. Now, we don't want that to happen. So either take that block off or tape it up like I did. It's always something. It should always be the first thing to remember when you're taking your mast down. All right, now we're going to discuss our furler. The furler sits in the small well at the very front of the boat. Now, as you can see, hold on one second, Tim. Can't, I don't know if we can see this well or not, but the rope is completely pulled out of the drum right now. There, that might be a good angle for you. There's no rope on the drum. So what Tim is going to do is twist it clockwise. Tim is twisting the drum clockwise and spooling up the rope. You may want to add a little tension, but it basically will correct itself. So you want to spin it up all the way till you don't have any more rope left in the boat to spin there. And this is called spooling the swivel. Better keep spooling. Your, your swivel will stop turning when your rope runs out. Our Johnson 18s have just the right amount of rope that's going to allow you to swivel, to swivel and furl the jib up completely. So swivel, swivel clockwise till there's no rope left. See, she's starting to look like a boat already. Now the next move you're going to make is you're going to take the bottom of your jib, the tack of your jib, and you're going to attach it right in there with the jib still unfurled. Now you'll notice there's a couple shackles on the bottom of our jib. That's because we're demonstrating here with the prototype jib, and it was made, as you can see, a couple shackles too short. So your jib, you will not have to concern yourself with those shackles. The bottom wire part of your jib that I'm showing right there should go right into your swivel. Once that is attached, you are free to furl your jib. Now how you do that is you just pull from inside the cockpit, you're going to pull the smallest little colored rope you can see in there. So it's a small line kind of in the size of a kite string, and we'll do that in a second. And she's getting a mite blustery out here. Now here's Tim furling up the jib. There you go. Since, since there's no jib sheets attached, it's going to want to unroll itself. So you may have to do a little rolling by hand to make sure you have a very nice, tight little package there that you can attach your jib sheets to. Your jib sheets are going to be these two small, uh, actually they're medium-sized bullet blocks with one shackle in between them. You're going to attach those right to the clue of your jib, right at the grommet hole there. Twist the shackle, and it's a real good idea to tighten that one with pliers because under a normal day's use, the jib likes to flog around a lot. Now we're ready to put your jib sheets on. Your jib sheet is going to be a 5 16 inch rope with a red tracer on it, white and red. You're going to stick it through one of the blocks and pull it back. Your jib is a 2 to 1 jib sheeting system, so there's going to be two, four actual lines heading to the jib, as is obvious. All right, one end of that rope you brought back is going to go underneath the pulley, like so. That's going to be your dead end point. And what we do is just usually tie an eight knot right in the bottom of that and pull it right in there. That's going to be the stopper of your jib sheet. It's always going to be locked in place. You can tie really whatever knot you'd like to put there. Next, you're going to take the other line. Let me show you the whole setup. The other line coming back, and you're going to put it through your ratchet. And you always want so when you pull backwards, you're going to get that clicking, ratchety sound. Then Tim's going to tie a small knot in the end of that also. That's the end of the sheet you trim and ease your jib with. And welcome back. We, After a quick break to go warm our hands up, we're going to return to the rigging of your fine Johnson 18. Right here, Tim's going to go next to put your boom on. The boom is pretty well self-explanatory. You have a gooseneck mount here on the mast. You basically just take your pin out and fit the toggle end of the boom right in there. And slide the pin down. 
All right, next we're gonna go with the hookup of the Cunningham and the Vang. Cunning, we're back here at the control center of your boat. And in my hand I have the green Cunningham rope. Right now I'm gonna uncleat that. Here's the red Vang rope. I'm gonna uncleat that. Actually, I'm gonna suck a little through there so it doesn't tangle up. Now, Tim is gonna show us first how we hook up the Cunningham. The Cunningham is going to be visualized up at the front here as the green rope coming through the through decks. And on that rope, there is a single pulley surrounded by two other pulleys. What you want is the middle pulley, and you're going to put right through the small fitting on the mast. That small fitting is about five inches below your boom. It goes on there with a ring. Then you're going to take your other two pulleys and you're going to, you see they'll fit together. There's a hook end and there's a bail end. And in all that makes your two to one Cunningham system. We're just going to leave it sitting right there on the boom now since there's no sail. And you can obviously tell when you're tangled and when you're not tangled because it's going to perform kind of a straight line setup that way. The vang is visualized by this black rope that looks kind of like a ski tow rope. What that is is pure spectra. And that spectra cord is about three times the strength of, of eighth inch cable. So it's really strong, brittle stuff. Now what you're going to do is you're going to feed that through the deck if it's not already and then through the pulley right at the base of the mast. Now you're going to take that right up onto the boom and you're going to put it through this bale on which is about two and a half feet down your boom from the front and you're going to pull some slack out and tie yourself a bowline right on the boom there tie yourself a nice big bowline uh, and that'll hold it securely in place why don't you pick up the boom there tim wants to just show them how it goes a straight line from the co cockpit right up to the boom since we're looking at the inside of the boat, you can see what that van cable attaches to, which is a network of pulleys down below here. I'm following the red. This is the part you really can't see all the way back into your backbone. So this gives you plenty of purchase. So we keep all the purchase down below hidden where you can't see it. So all you have to do up top is just have this single line keeps it nice and uncomplicated above deck where it counts. When we're not using our 18, we like to connect our main halyard right to the outhaul of the boom. That lets your boom just kind of float free in place there. While Tim's uh, getting the main sheet out, I'm going to show you this little line here on your boom, which exits right towards the front. That is your outhaul control. Your outhaul, all your purchase again is inside the boom, so all you have to deal with is this one rope exiting here. The cleats at the front, the control is at the back. All right, starting at the front of your main sheet, Tim is going to tie a bowline right in the becket end of his blocks on the boom. Now, if for some reason you don't have the blocks on your boom, you're going to notice the front one has a becket where you attach your, you dead end your rope and the back one does not. Now he's going to untangle it and find the other end of his main sheet. Okay. The other end goes through one end of the double pulley on your traveler, back up to the block with the becket on the boom, pull it through. Now notice it doesn't matter which end of that, which side of that pulley you use. Okay, now from there, Tim's going to go down through the other side of the pulley. Again, doesn't matter which one. It's got to be the one that's not being used, obviously. Then he's going to go up to the block on the boom without the becket. Now you're going to go straight down to your ratchet block. And you're going to go through and pull it out so it makes the clicking sound when you pull it out. And that is the proper way to rig up your main sheet. Okay, next thing we're going to go through quickly is how to rig your spinnaker up. First thing Tim's going to do here is look for all the ends. So he's going to look for the tack, the clue, and the head of the spinnaker. That's the head. That's the head of the spinnaker. 
red, blue. You'll notice because the red or tr or trailing end of the spinnaker is going to be on one side. The blue or leading edge of the spinnaker is going to be on the other side. The tack of the spinnaker is most easily recognized because there's a logo on it and the blue comes to a stop at the same point the bottom half of the spinnaker which on this one is a white tape will be located so the blue leading up to a logo is usually your easiest way to know the tack or front end of your spinnaker the front of the spinnaker is going to attach to your tack line of your spinnaker pole which will be blue and the easiest way to remember that is that the blue of the pole rope tack line matches the blue front tape of your spinnaker. Now Tim's going to pull it out of the pole and he's going to lead it back down the side of the boat to attach to the spinnaker. He's, he's going outside the side stay. He's going to tie a bowline around that tack grommet of the spinnaker. Okay, now comes the tricky part of the whole spinnaker setup, and that is attaching your sheets to the clue end of your spinnaker. Now, once you have the tack lined up, you can go after your clue. There's the tack. There's the tack. Here's the spinnaker sheet, starboard spinnaker sheet. Okay. Go in between the spinnaker and the side stage. So you want to put the spinnaker sheet inside all other sheets. So since the tack line was laying outside, you're going to want to come right inside between the spinnaker and the side stay and hook up. If you cross the sheets up, the tack and the sheet, the spinnaker will go up with the sheets on the outside, which you want to try and avoid. Now this is going to be a little difficult while we're explaining it right now, but I think if you if you maybe even just lay it out once yourself before you go out sailing, you'll get a good idea. Now you then take the back spinnaker sheet, which goes to the back of the boat here, your port, port side spinnaker sheet, and you can tie that right onto the cl clue patch right next to your other sheet. So you're going to have two bowlines right next to each other there. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm going to have to say I was just informed not all spinnakers are doing their <laughs> their tack and their uh, rear tapes the same way. So blue may be the back and red may be the forward. So you probably will have to ask your sailmaker what's the color of the tape on the leading edge when before you go to hook it up. This is the spinnaker sheet, or halyard rather. We are hooking up to the head now. And you always want to just kind of check up the mast to make sure that's going the right way, uh, kind of uncleared. Everything is going to go up outside of and behind the side stays. So keep that in mind. Now you just kind of, in packing your chute, you just want to kind of keep all the ends together and pack the rest of the spinnaker down, making sure you're not twisted. Just kind of accordion it up. I pack the bottom first. And work from the bottom to the top. there you have it. The bag closes by the rope there. And pop it shut. And that's your spinnaker bag. May sound a little complicated what we explained about the sheet placement. And I'll show you why in a second. Here, when the boat's the spinnaker's not up, you're gonna have two ropes. Your tack line, which is the front of your spinnaker, and your sheet, your lazy sheet, which is gonna come from the other side of the boat across here. Now this is what we were trying to explain. We were talking about hooking the sheets up inside the tack line. So your tack line is going to be on the outside and your sheets are going to go inside. Still going around the side stays mind you but it's just going to be put together inside. So here's your sheet. Here's the front of the spinnaker. 
And then there's your halyard, and then there's your reverse sheet. So you have the tack line and the sheet. So it'll all kind of lay out once you do it once, I think. Well, and that concludes our Johnson 18 demonstrational rigging video. Our hands are a little numb right now, so we're going to go inside and warm them up over the coals we got burning. But we hope we were uh, very helpful for you today, and if uh, you have any other problems, call Tim Regan or Jeff Dubeck up here at the Johnson Boat Works, and we'd be happy to help you out a little bit further. We hope you enjoy your boat. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it for you. So, signing off from White Bear Lake, have a good one.